Dragon Storm 2 Platinum was a very long grind, which required me to explore almost every corner in the map. Cuts to yapping, let's just roll the video. The game starts with a celebration of some sorts. There's an orchestra and townsfolk are vibing and dancing to the music, until the knight's captain interrupted the vibe, as it was time to coronate a new ruler for Vermont. After saluting the knight's captain, the faceless monarch, assumably the risen as is in first person mode, advanced towards the golden throne and claimed my place to rule the entire country. After solidifying my position, the dragon called me on discord. For naught but thine ambition can alter the course of the river's fate. Jesus Christ, you are embarrassing me. Right now, I'm literally dying of cringe. The cringe was so bad they had to put me in jail for their hate crime. As a prisoner stationed in the excavation site, I had to do hard labor to earn my freedom. While I headed over to my task, I was greeted by a familiar face. Do your injuries pain you? Oh, Rook! The guy from the first game! A man only needs 12 years for his glow up, changed my mind. After catching up with Rook, we headed to our task, which is just collecting rocks. However, my shift was suddenly interrupted by a Medusa. The jail overseer was too scared to help even though he had a staff and he dipped out. My brother in Christ, you have a staff, use it! Well, guess I'll have to be the man of the house and kill this guy on my own. Hold on, let me check my keybinds first. Yep, I'm done, let us commence the fight. I'm starting to regret choosing thief as my first vocation, for I cannot reach the Medusa's head, and I had to be carried by my fellow mage and archer pawns. I was doing so badly that the Medusa almost petrified me. But before I could turn into a stone statue, the combined strength of the pawns dropped her down to 4 health bars and prompting a cutscene where she reels in agony and has to resort to retreating. While we celebrated our victory, I was greeted by the seneschal of this world. He noticed my character had has lost her memories, and he suggested escaping out of this prison. Of course we did, with the overseer right behind our trail. We had no choice but to jump off the cliff. Well, the seneschal called in a griffin uber to our rescue. With that, we escaped the excavation site. While traveling over international borders, someone checked and realized I didn't have a license for my griffin, and decided to shoot it out of the sky. This ride is terrible, let me speak to your manager. Oh, maybe not. After a terrible crash landing, I found Rook unfortunately drowning in the brine. I could do nothing as the brine swallowed him up whole. Rest in peace, Rook. I'll see you in the third game. While I was paying my respects, I was interrupted by some guards patrolling the area. It was too late for the extra manpower since... A man has fallen into the river in Lego City. Anyways, he ordered me to follow him to the encampment where someone could treat my wounds. On our way there, were we confronted by a pack of guards? Goblins. Now, look at my health bar down there. The grey bar is the loss gauge. Consuming a curative only heals the loss gauge, not your complete HP bar. Which is a devastating nerf to the healing system in the first game. I arrived at the encampment and was greeted by a party of pawns. They guided me to a riftstone and I knew exactly what I had to do. I used the riftstone to summon my main pawn, name of Dragon D's Nuts. What did he say? From a Gus cosplayer to a furry, he had that dog in him all along. I was advised to depart for Melf to learn about my past. Sure enough, I made contact with shattered memories. Oddly enough, the dragon was involved in it. Eventually, all the broken pieces glued themselves together, and the full picture is so overwhelming, my whole body cannot take it. Being vulnerable in front of a bad bitch? Mm. Hell nah, she's gonna get the ick. Well, can't do anything about this as I rewatched my first time fighting the dragon. It went so bad, no one that someone erased it for me. Well, to save me from the embarrassment, someone shot an arrow to distract the dragon. And it was none other than the bad bitch herself. Arisen, don't fumble her. Quick, think of something before she turns into Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Don't nobody want that weak ass shit. Well, at least it's got the dragon's attention. Unfortunately, he is using his ultimate ability and I was burnt to a crisp. Bro thinks she's in a museum now. To make things even worse for me, he took my heart and swallowed it up whole. The first game did it way better, honestly. And it's a fact. At least I went out saving the woman I really liked. And just like in the past, she took it upon herself to carry me somewhere safe and nurse me back to good health. Once I regained consciousness, I was 
greeted with a face so artistic, I knew she'd be the perfect candidate for romance. Hell, I'll even forgive her for shooting down my griffin ride. The baddie's name is Urika, and she's the chiefess of Melv. Before I could get her number, the border watch has arrived looking for the Arisen, and unfortunately had to leave the gooning session. Mayhap you will visit me again someday. Of course! Besides, you are in the game's poster. I assume you have some important side quests later on. Regardless, I approached the Border Watch, and they appear to be massive fans of the Arisen. They wanted to accompany me to the capital of Vermont, but first let me do some side quests. I gave a girl some medicine. I also spoke with Ian, one of the villagers, and took on the brother's brave and timid side quest. While searching for the other brother, we stumbled across a campsite. With a modest camping kit in the vicinity, I set up camp for my party for the rest of the day. Let him cook! Let him cook! I said let him cook! Oh, look at that. Ooh. This some serious gourmet shit. After a well rested night, we continued on to find our target. And we soon found him yeah, getting yeah. ganged up by a bunch of wolves. Maybe I underestimated them, but I didn't think they would deal a lot of damage to me. Oh. Man, I'm dead. Whoa, 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 Eventually, we took out the wolves and saved the brother from a near-death experience. However, we are not out of the woodworks yet as we encountered our first cyclops. What are you gonna do, big guy? Sit on me? Yes, sir. Oh, jeez! After a while of chopping at his feet, we toppled the titan and made him do the doggy style pose. I used the opportunity to grab onto his face and spent left click until his life was forfeit. Let's go! With the biggest obstacle out of the way, we delivered the brothers back to Melf safely and joined the border watch party to venture for Vermont. However, during the escort mission, Gregor fell off a cliff and died instantly. Without a guide, I have to find another way to get to Vermont. I did find a way and it was through Waterfall Cave. This cave was infested with Saurians, slimes, which are very weak to fire damage. <laughs> oh my god, easy claps, my god. However, not all the cave's inhabitants are for the material as a purple Saurian variant to take me back to the afterlife. Even worse, I accidentally summoned a white boss fight. Since there's no holy affinity in the party, I'm doing terribly. And my pawns are having a hard time sticking around. But that served an excellent opportunity for me to get the quit playing death trophy. After getting my ass kicked by the white for 10 minutes straight, I decided to count my losses and dipped away from the boss fight. During my escape, I collected my first seeker's token. Apart from needing 79 more for the collector achievement, I have to keep this location in mind for another questline. At long last, we escaped Waterfall Cave and bathed in the warm rays of sunlight. The same cannot be said while making this video. You got me. Anyways, I recuperated my strength by resting in a campfire and resumed my long hike to Vermont. I encountered my first ogre. Oh god. But my pawns and I packed him without much effort. Yeah, I feel like this guy's been nerfed hard. It has been a long and arduous journey, but finally we arrived at the castle gates. As we have lost Gregor, I lack the authorization to enter the city. I tried to sneak past the guards, but was quickly apprehended. It seems that I have made a grave mistake when Brian's the knight captain personally interrogated me but i began picking up some suspicious things and then the truth hit me hard you and no other are the sovereign i was not expecting that long story short based on my speculation sovereigns are reasons that either killed the dragon or took his bargain just like the duke in the first game the previous sovereign had passed away the crown is now shared by queen disa and her husband but disa wants her son sven to replace the husband and rule over vermont but then a new arisen arrived a month ago which puts disa's plan at risk after my defeat at the hands of the dragon disa cursed me to forget my memory while Brian's plans on some schemes to overthrow the imposter regent, I used the free time to re-explore Vermont. I exited the interrogation room. A young fella bumped into me and was in a hurry. Apparently, he was wanted by several guards. I diverted their attention as my mama didn't raise no snitch. He thanked us for our kind actions and even wanted to ask us for a favor. However, the guards again caught up to him. Another time as I approached the vocation guild for business. Unfortunately, I cannot become a sorcerer or or a warrior as they ran out of weapons. So I asked the weaponsmith for guidance on how to procure such weapons, and he suggested a goblin cave in the vicinity. Well, his tip was correct as I found myself a greatsword and a whole ass bakery. Let me explain. 
What the hell? Oh my god. God damn. <laughs> We must stay focused, brothers. After yoinking and our stuff, I presented the armaments to the vocation guildmaster, and as promised, unlocked the sorcerer and warrior vocations. I also boarded my first Oscar headed for the checkpoint rest town. I took a quick nap, but a raid interrupted my sleep. Turns out Ogres do really like wild goose steak, and it was not acting alone. Gotcha, bitch! That's two! However, the ogres cannot withstand the power of the skull splitter. And one by one, they fall to the broken spin to win. Well, that's over. Let me just doze off again and hope nothing bad happens again. You've got to be kidding me. Psych! We arrived at a checkpoint rest town. Here, I stumbled upon Ibrahim's scrap store where I could request forgeries. And that's all for the checkpoint rest town as I returned to Vermont. While walking to the van door to buy some curatives, a woman stopped me as she had a favor to ask. Well, she's leaving her humble abode in a few days and she wants me to look after the place while she's gone. Well, as I've been a hermit for most of my life, I yearned for the comfort of a bed. When I woke up from a deep slumber, I was notified my pawn has returned from the rift. Dragon Disney has been pulling insane impressions. To incentivize my pawn being used more, I set up a pawn quest. I slept through a week's worth of time until my client returns from her vacation. However, I have played right into her hands as she realized I'll be fond of this place so I'll buy it. Wow, I've been baited. Hook, line and sinker. You know what? For the achievement, I'll just buy your house. You Cheap ass. Now that I think of it, that was a good deal. You. Have you seen the house prices in this economy? If you search for house prices in Sydney, you get this horrifying result. 1.8 million Australian dollars for sale, I cannot be asked. After the housing fiasco, I checked out the slums and found a child standing all alone. Well, turns out she's an orphan and she wants a bunch of flowers to commemorate her deceased parents. You'll find not but the finest flowers. While roaming around to gather some flowers, I spotted a griffin in the rice fields. Of course I have to kill it, that thing is free XP. Just like in the old games, tis weak to fire. It was saddening when I don't have brain splitter in my arsenal. If brain splitter exists in Dragon's Dogma 2, that griffin would have been dead in just 4 moves. Anyways, while in the heat of combat, an NPC died. No big deal as I used a weak stone to revive him. Once he got up, I earned the savior achievement. It was also in this boss fight when I learned the enrage mechanic. When agitated, it summons a bunch of lightning attacks. Honestly, they are pretty easy to outmaneuver. Without any new tricks to show anymore, the old griffin perishes. Yeah, let's go! After the encounter, I grabbed myself some flowers and crafted a banquet of flowers and delivered them to Daphne. Although pleased with the flowers, she again asked for a favor which involves silver ore. As I had some with me, this is light work, no reaction. Well, the kid is beyond aesthetic and that brightens my day. I'll visit her again in a few days time as I have more matters to attend. Remember this fella we saved by not snitching? Well, he's having trouble buying an ornate box because he's- <laughs> Yeah, this fella is the son of Queen Deesa. Where's the trust fund? Anyways, I bought the ornate box from the merchant and gave it to Sven. He was delighted with it and he'll keep in touch with us in the future. After concluding business with the royal prince, I went back to the slums to check in on Daphne. This time she requested two pieces of gold ore. I collected the valuable resource and delivered them swiftly. Although I've done everything Daphne has asked for, she still had one final request. That is to provide creatives for the poor. Once again, I delivered all the items she wants and thus concludes her quest line for now. Before I could resume the main story, I had to do one more side quest. Well, you see this guy Sebastian is planning to go out and his mom forbids him to do that. And I need to get him a body double that resembles his facial features. And I just know who to ask. As I've done so many requests for Daphne, it's fair that I ask one in return. As she's quite kind-hearted and naive, she of course agreed. With the body double secure, I just need to help Sebastian pack up for his trip to Melv. Once I give him the courtesy for when he gets into trouble, he heads off to Melv, and it should take a day for him to return. One day has passed and Sebastian has gone missing. Well, what do you think's gonna happen? He might have been kidnapped by some predator. Never mind, he's just being jumped by a pack of goblins. Stand aside, you disgusting perf. So you are not out there to get a cupcake. Hey kid, you're safe now. Please tell me you don't have Snapchat. Did someone show you his mini lad?
Anyways, we return Sebastian back to his home, completed the quest and earned myself the affinity and beyond achievement. Finally, I can hear what plans Captain Bryant has cooked up. Jesus Christ, it's been two weeks. I met Captain Bryant in the inn at night and he asked me to complete the following quests. First, reduce monster population numbers in three areas. Second, explore the nameless village to find out more about the fake Arisen. Third, I have to bail the magistrate from his prison, as he is one of our greatest allies. Fourth, we have to infiltrate the masquerade to uncover the identity of the fake sovereign. The fifth and final task is to get the evidence of suspicious activity, which might be found in Disa's and Alard's headquarters. Well, for starters, I rinsed the goblin population of Mons Eastern Plateau and saved the lives of the soldiers stationed there. My second target was in the Travel Mines, which was a piece of cake. My third and final destination was in Harvey Village, and my job here is to eliminate any Saurians living underneath the village. When I came down there, I saw a small task force already engaged with the scaly beasts. Once again, I saved their skins. Eventually, I wiped out the entire Saurian population living in the caves. Before I could report the results to Brandt, a Bistran villager from Harv requested me to terminate the Saurian invaders. It was only three Saurians, I don't know why they needed my help. Besides being relieved the Saurians are gone, the villager wants me to come back to Harv a few days later. After activating the port crystal in the vicinity, I reported back to Brandt and collected my rewards for Monster Cowling. Then, I teleported right back to Har Village using a fairy stone. They really took 3 days to rebuild the entire village, it looks way better than before. Still, the villagers cannot fend off the Saurians once again. Yeah, I think I need to get paid doing all their dirty work. Although the crisis was diverted, another one rose immediately. Apparently, the chieftain of this village is racist, and blamed a beast train for going inside the Saurian infested caves. I am not fit to be a negotiator, so I'll leave the talking to the both of them while I check on Melv. I don't know what they did, apparently the people of Melf have provoked the wrath of a drake. The fight is kind of similar to the Earth Dragon back in Dragon's Dogma 1, which is just a terrible mechanic of hitting the rest boss to actually deal damage. It also squirts acid from his stomach, which does a lot of damage if you just stand there like I did. Look how stupid I look right now. With everyone contributing to fend off the dragon, it flew away. Why do I get the feeling I'll see this creature again in the future? What matters now is we saved Melf from destruction once more. After the battle, I spoke with one of the fighters, and turns out he mastered a new technique called the Mystic Spearhand. As I concluded business in Melf, it is time to head over to Nameless Village to find out more about the fake sovereign. Naturally, I asked the chieftain if he had any valuable info, but what I got was a... I prefer really not to, not to speak. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. I don't blame him though. Have you seen the stupid stuff that gets people cancelled? Although he didn't say much, he gave me a fifth mastery scroll which unlocked the place of the pyre skill. I looked around the thief maester's house for more clues and found a stairway leading underneath. It led me into an underground bunker filled with obstacle courses. At the end of the course was a door sealed tight, maybe the evidence is stored there. Come on, I have a combined total of over 300 hours for Hollow Knight and Celeste. This is nothing but baby food to me. And surprise surprise, a bunch of thief and joys are waiting for me in the room. As a reward for passing their test, the thief leader told me everything he knew about the imposter. Apparently the fake sovereign was one of them, however once he reached royalty, the village banished him. The thief leader was also kind enough to give me a bill of his arrest, and even gave us another thief mastery's grow, in which I used to acquire the formless feint technique. Yeah, it gives you iframes for days, which practically makes you... Yep, I'll see myself out the door with that joke. After I handed over the fake sovereign's bill of arrest, I visited Erika to see how well she's doing after the dragon attacked. Apparently, the queen regent was not pleased with Melv having two dragon incidents. First of all, let me set the facts straight. This is the dragon. And this is a lesser dragon. Get your facts straight. Second, how are you gonna fend off a dragon if you're not an arisen? Do you pepper spray their eyes? That shit's not gonna work. Anyways, back to the matter at hand. Erika was deemed a traitor for 
for failing to defend Melv. Upon seeing me again, Uruka was relieved, and the both of us prepared to sleep for the night. However, the next day she went missing. It was soon revealed that she had escaped in the middle of the night. Sir Leonard, the new chieftain of the village, is quite worried for Uruka and urges me to find her as soon as possible. Turns out she has fled to Harv Village, which once again has a Saurian problem. Just send a paro down there to burn their nests. This time the Saurians kidnap one of the villagers, but the chieftain refuses to send in a rescue party. So Uruka decided to form her own party instead. As I needed to get into her good graces, I joined Uruka's efforts. We found the villager getting jumped and took out the aggressors. I don't know why it took six Saurians to beat up one Beastron, but at least he's safe. Recognizing Uruka's heroic actions, the racist chieftain resigned and she would replace him. Delighted to hear Uruka is safe, so Leonard rewarded me handsomely. As he was a fighter master in the past, he gave me a fighter maestro scroll as a bonus. Hey. After that, I resumed the main quest line by first sneaking into the masquerade party. Bro clearly did not read the quest description. No wonder this stupid donkey gets unlocked to death. Wait, that's literally me. Well, let's try that again. Surely nothing will go wrong, right? How did they see through my master disguise? Although it may seem I have hit a point of no return, you can easily solve the bug by resting at the inn for a few days. And there you go, I can finally start my mission. During my investigation, I found a door hidden within the walls, and it led me right into the Rose Chateau. When I walked in, I was already caught, and my captor was rather... Nah, bro was too flabbergasted to look into her eyes. Come on, pull some bitches for once, for God's sake. Give <laughs> the face of someone in search of a juicy morsel. Bruh. Luckily, Yennefer isn't interested in exposing us. Rather, she is keen in exposing the royal family, who happened to be right beyond the wall. I had a good look at the false arisen, and even learned the identity of Disa's husband, Lord Faces. I reported my findings to Brandt, and headed over to the jail to bail the magistrate. Upon freedom, he thanked me for my efforts, and promised to help me whether I have trouble with tomes. After that, I headed over to Disa's headquarters to search for suspicious evidence. Well, I I found a torn letter on the desk, and I yoinked it. Before I could plan an escape route, Sven found me. Well, turns out he has the same goals as ours, to expose Queen Disa's misdeeds. Here, he returned the favor by lying to the guards while I planned my escape through the window. I delivered the torn letter to Brandt, and snuck into Minister Allah's headquarters to look for more evidence. Turns out there was a hidden room, and in it, I found a letter originated from Batar. I delivered the letter to Brandt. It mentions something called God's way, and had something to do with Melv. I headed over to Melv to see what's going on. To my surprise, it was under the control of Queen Deesa. I bribed the guard in order to get in, and checked in on Sir Leonard to see how he's doing. Turns out the guards here are mistreating the villagers, and Leonard is planning on an uprising. To do that, he needs armaments, but sadly, they have been confiscated by the soldiers. I delivered the weapons to Leonard, and joined in his efforts to repel the abusive soldiers. It's it seems like they cannot comprehend the might of the Risen, as the soldiers abandoned their posts with their tails between their legs. Although brave Sir Leonard has made himself a criminal, and he plans to leave for half. I told Uruka about what happened, and she was way beyond delighted. Out of appreciation, she arranged a date between us at night. I have waited a long time. Yep, I have secured the baddie. They don't call me the Arisen for nothing. Let's go! After that, we attempted to sneak into the palace to find out more about the Godsway power. But something was clearly amiss when Dragon Deesnas reeled in agony. It is because the fake Arisen is using the same power to sway pawns to his will. Although our plans have been foiled, there is another way. Queen Deesa is very well aware of the Arisen's arrival in Vermont, and she is not happy. As a result, she hired multiple assassins, in hopes one of them would end my life. And I just happened to find one of them in broad daylight. I handed him over to Captain Brandt in hopes of extracting useful information. A few days later, Brandt had some excellent news. He revealed that the agents dispatched had the same origin as the Godsway power. The assassin also had a Batal border pass, so Brandt decided to take it from him and gave it to me. Before I journeyed to Batal, I maxed out my vocation rank and changed my vocation from a thief to a mystic spearhand. With most of my business 
concluded in Vermont, I handed in my border entry pass. After checking my passport is valid, I stepped foot into Batao soil for the first time. In case we got lost, the Seneschal FaceTimed us and directed us to the Rock's most burrow. On my way there, I encountered a Drake, which is a combination of all the dragon mini bosses in the first game. Since I have plenty of experiences with these bosses, this version of a Drake would be easy, right? Wrong. Yeah, the Drake gave me an ass beating of a lifetime. It becomes worse when dogs interfere the boss fight. You know what really grinds my gears? While you are fighting a bigger, more important monster, a smaller, more annoying mob knocks you over, then drags you to another new location and bites your face off. Eventually, I did put down the Drake once and for all. Yes! But at what cost? I had fought this guy for three hours straight, and I was forced to venture the darkness alone as my pawns have died during the boss fight. It was a long hike, but finally I have reached my destination. A Bistran guard, Manella, was waiting for my arrival. She wanted to talk to us in private and also get us some drinks. After a couple of rounds, she offered me a Batal residence permit. At this time points, the Seneschal guides us to visit a man called Ambrosius to answer our questions. But before that, I had some other things to do. I first completed a trial of archery side quests and strengthened the alliance with the elves. I talked with the elven chieftain again in order to get the archer maestro skill. The second side quest I'll be doing is investigating the phantom ox cart. Turns out it is used to smuggle pawns from Vermont to an undisclosed location. Curious, I disguised myself as a pawn and boarded the ox cart to see where it would take me. Well, I was transported back to Batal. However, the guards are not pleased to see me here. To make matters trickier, my pawns somehow do not fight back against the attackers. And it does not feel good when you are the only one getting stun locked. One advantage of being an archer in this scenario is I can keep them at bay with my bow. Once they got within range, I'm cooked. Patiently, I took out every single one of them at a distance while I remained my composure. And soon enough, I'm the last man standing. Fucking Christ! So, now! After that, I taught my pawn a specialization, revived a deceased man at the Batal Morgue, and attempted to fly on the back of a griffin for the second time. Whoops, maybe another time. Well, by removing all my overpowered pawns, maybe I can have another chance to ride to Griffin. It is what it is. I might as well explore the Batal coastline while I'm here. I found some peculiar crystals near the water, so I picked them up. God, I hate those gore harpies. They are so annoying, and I miss my pawns. <laughs> the mass. Once the gold harpies are dealt with, I grabbed more crystals. While I was looking for more crystals, I stumbled upon the man called Ambrosius. Coincidence or not, he's actually looking for those blue crystals, so I handed all of them to him. Curious, I asked him what those crystals are, and they are substances used to create the god's way power. However, he requires larger chunks of the crystal. Maybe the dragon forged or the oracle would know more about this. Before that, I took one last shot at riding the griffin. The mystic spear hands downward from move is very useful to reaching the griffin's back. Although the griffin was very hell-bent on shaking me off, with a little bit of patience and coaxing, it gave up and took off, unlocking the regriffening trophy. Hey, we did it! I resummoned my pawns and visited the dragon forged in his humble abode. And for some reason, you can dragon forge equipment before the dragon boss fight. Why? Regardless, I asked him about the Gosway and he is just as clueless as we are. However, he alluded that Faces has something to do with it. I also asked the Oracle for guidance. She mentioned a place buried underneath the sea and it's best to check out the dragon forged in Half Village. After talking to her, I somehow got the trickster vocation. With no other leads, I talked to the dragon forged and he confirmed that there was indeed a kingdom lost to time. He also mentioned a powerful arisen still living there and it's best for me to check him out. Right on cue, the Lost Kingdom erected itself from beneath the sea. Seems like the Arisen inside would want to talk to me. That could wait as I attempted the to the victor go the spoils achievement. All you needed to do is bait a thief NPC to knock you over and steal something from you. Proceed to clobber him to death and you get the achievement. I resumed my exploration at the seafloor shrine and came across what seemed to be Grand Soren's Everfall for the first game. The Arisen sitting at the bottom of the Everfall 
before introduced himself as Rothais. And he explained to me that the crystals used to create God's way are the very fragmented souls of previously deceased Arisons. Sensing that I am destined for something greater and grander, he offered his pure and intact soul in the form of a Godsbane blade. However, the edges of the weapon are dulled with centuries of age. I handed the ancient relic over to Ambrosius to see what he can do. Although he can restore the blade, he needs 15 Worms Life Crystals to start the process. Remember the lesser dragon we repelled in mouth? Well, it's retreated to God knows where, and I'm hellbent on ending its life. I asked the trickster oracle for advice, and she revealed to me that the lesser dragon currently resides in Dragon's Breath Tower. Nah, what did bro do to deserve such a dox? Before I left the oracle's temple, I noticed a ladder going up. I used it to reach the roof of the temple, and fancied myself a seeker's token. I also found the real oracle hiding on the roof. For my keen eye, she rewarded me with the trickster Maester skill. As I made my way to Dragon's Breath Tower, I noticed a cyclops sleeping right next to a gap. My pawn staggered, it, leaving it stumbling right towards the gap. The cyclops had no choice but to hold on for dear life. I used the opportunity to climb upon its back and reach the other end of the gap. I got sidetracked from my main path to the tower when I discovered the Dravnir's grotto. I stormed the grotto, killing numerous goblins, bludgeoned my way through rocky saurians, and invaded the secret lair of a griffin. I don't know what it had for lunch as I got a fairy stone from its corpse. Eventually, I cleared out the entirety of the grotto and entered into a brand new area. The new area was actually Volcanic Island. Let's just go back to the main objective. Halfway there, I noticed there was a peculiar cave with petrified statues around it. It was in fact the lair of a Medusa. Unfortunately, I was infected with petrification 10 seconds in the boss fight. Fortunately, I have two bottles of maleating elixir, so I continued the fight. Soon, I realized I can do significant damage to her by just spamming her head. Although, she does get tired of it and flings you out of the way. With two pawns already turned into stone statues, I don't want to lose my entire party, so I ended her life quickly. From her corpse, I looted her spell bow, which grants double XP and vocation XP gained upon a kill. There are three achievements related to Medusa, but for now, I'll leave her alone, as I have a lesser dragon to kill. Once I stepped foot into Dragon's Breath Tower, not only was the target already waiting for us, we might have some additional help, as I spy with my little eye a masked figure in the background. Remember the dude that gave us the Mystic Spear Hand vocation? He returns to us to finish what we started. With Sigurd's help, we demolished the Lesser Dragon. All that's running to the far west of Patal and still getting packed in 4 minutes. That reminds me of a feathery troublemaker that I used to know. Admiring our valiancy and courage, Sigurd gave us the Maester skill for Mystic Spear Hand. I then delivered the required amounts of Worm's Life Crystals to Ambrosius, and he says he just needs a day's time to complete his work. With a free day, at our hands, I grinded away several achievements by first changing my vocation to a trickster, and then paid a visit to the lovely Medusa. As I have brought slicing weapons this time, I obtained a Medusa's head upon its defeat. Hey, we did it! However, the head had withered, and I needed a preserved Medusa head for the next two achievements. For the next 15 minutes, I attempted to chop off its head, but still no preserved Medusa head. By the way, check out this funny clip. What the fuck is going on? Eventually, I found out that lightning affinity weapons are my answer. With just one attempt, I finally got myself the preserved Medusa head. My game capture definitely didn't crash when I got the achievement. With a preserved Medusa head in my arsenal, I can finally petrify everything in the game, including Medusa herself. Well, there goes every Medusa-related achievement. As a day had already passed, I checked in Abrosis's progress. Judging by his laugh, I believe this man cooked. Before he could deliver the purified Gossbane blade to Lord Faces, the Shanashaw stepped in to change his mind. Well, I guess we're in the end game now. Hold on, before I deliver the Gossbane to Lord Faces, let me just clear my to-do list like clanging on a harpy, smuggled myself to Batal without my border permit, taught my pawn elvish, cooked every piece of meat in the game, which includes rotten and aged meat. You see, I'm a professional when it comes to meat. What do you mean by that? I also paid the Sphinx a visit to solve her 
riddles. For starters, I accepted the riddle of eyes, and the answer is right behind a sealed door. I messed that one literally as the item she seeks is right on the door frame. I then heard the riddle of madness, in which I had to bring forth my most beloved. Since I love dragging these nuts across your chin so much, I delivered him to the Sphinx, and she approves. Well, I guess I'm a furry now. After that, I heard the riddle of conviction. The answer the Sphinx seeks is the item I cherish the most. As I love fast travel in this game a lot, I had to sadly give up my port crystal. She approves my sacrifice, and actually returned the port crystal right to me. But not every riddle of hers are that easy, as I heard the riddle of rumination. The answer to this specific riddle can only be discovered at the location where I got my first Seeker's token. Truth be told, I actually forgot when I found it. Then I realized I can see it through game capture. Oh, oh my god, is that it? Yes! Yes! I found it! For those who don't clip their gameplay, rest in peace. And there you go, easy peasy lemon squeezy. After that easter egg hunt, I sought out the riddle of wisdom. And the answer to the riddle is supposed to be a sphinx parent. Huh? My Sphinx in Christ, you are a grown ass female with titties. What do you need your mama for? Although it sounds confusing at first, the answer lies within Half's Ristone. Once within the Rift, you see pawns with the word Sphinx in their names. Keep finding until you see the name Sphinx parents pop up. Just hire the pawn and bring her to the Sphinx. After solving my fifth and final riddle, she decided to dip to another new location. With a little bit of hiking, I found her again in her new domain and solved the riddle of reunion. For my first riddle, I was asked to deliver a very fragile pot to Sir Martis. I found the dude chilling in the shadows. Then I yoinked him. As the pot is one touch away from being broken, I used a fairy stone to teleport the guy over. For my eighth riddle, I was asked to place down statues based on how many riddles I have solved. You can actually cheat this by walking away from her to look at the quest log. Apparently, placing statues in a good position is very hard. I replaced the fallen statues and solved the riddle. For my troubles, I was rewarded with the unmaking arrow, which will be very useful later on. For my ninth riddle, I have to beat a foot soldier in a 1v1. Just grab the soldier and eat him off a cliff to solve the puzzle. For my tenth and final riddle, I must seek a man out and bring him to the Sphinx. Judging by his look, I knew it would be easy to find him. Damn, why are you so fucking ugly? Soon enough, I found my quarry. I presented the abomination to the Sphinx, and she did a detailed cross examination. Everything was accurate, even the teeth. With that, I solved every riddle the sphinx had to offer. With our business concluded, I prepared to end her life by shooting the unmaking arrow. Charge complete. Hold up. Wait a minute. Wait, what? Something ain't right. Oh my god, you f the NPC blocked it. Let's try this one more time. Nice! We did it! Upon the Sphinx defeat, the key dangling from her neck fell off. I used the key to unlock the big gold chest in the middle. Inside it was an eternal wake stone. If you have killed a bunch of innocent people, you can use the eternal wake stone to revive them back to life. However, they'll remember what you did to them. I continued on with my side hustles by defeating a headless horseman, acquiring a pawn badge, learned the master skill for mage, sorcerer, and warrior. I also got two NPC strong and carried them to my home earning the plenty of a reason to go around achievement. The reason they are drunk is because I've been buying out rounds at inns in both Vermont and Batal to chip away the philanthropist achievement. Hey, nice! I can finally make some progress on the main story. As I have a thick sovereign to catch, I used the Ghostbane blade to open the spell seal door to chase after Lord Phasers. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a bronze giant rose from the depths of the sea. This fella been featured in many trailers. I hope he puts up a good fight. Nope, you can easily one-shot it with an unmaking arrow. After the spear and the crystals on the body fall into the water, just wait around 6 minutes for it to get on land, topple over and die. You will get an achievement for killing him that way. For now, it lies dormant, unable to create destruction or chaos. With the gargantuan threats disposed of, I explored Volcanic Island Camp and indulged myself in the world-renowned hot spring for only $100.
Bros. On the one hand, Capcom censors melons and cake while showing off the Sphinx goodies. Either you go all in or don't do it at all, Capcom. After the delightful spa, I came across a homeless man begging for more nude liquor. Just for the fun of it, he gave me a rotten egg. I'll deal with the alcoholic later as I have an old man to seek in the wilderness. Apparently, he hurt his back and he needs some curatives. I delivered the medicinal herbs he specifically requested. For compensation, he brought me over to his house. However, his elfish wife didn't trust us completely. I'll have to earn that trust by escorting her husband to the volcanic hot spring to heal his back injury. Yeah, this man is straight up capping. There's no way he had a back injury and can still do this. Eventually, I brought him to his destination and he can't wait to dip in that holy water. With our kind actions, his wife gave us the magic archer vocation and the master skill. I also delivered the news liquor to the homeless person. Turns out he was an arisen that failed to kill his dragon. For my troubles, he taught me the ways of the warfarer and even gave me the master skill. I swapped my vocation twice to get those easy trophies and read my final to Maester Scrolls to get the master of Maester's trophy. Hey. Before my eventual confrontation with Lord Vasus, I crossed out two of the most annoying achievements in this game by exploring 50 dungeons and collected those dreadful AT Seekers tokens. This website came in clutch for my trophy hunting. You can filter anything you want in the left hand menu to only show you what dungeons you are missing and where those Seekers tokens are hiding. I wish you luck in getting all AT annoying collectibles. With all that said, I purchased the frame rate daggers and strengthened the deadly weapon in worm fire. Finally, it's time for us to face our destiny. Wait, who the f*** is that guy? Instead of fighting me, you should fight your barber, man. Cause what the fuck is that haircut? Disgusting! Can we just ban this hairstyle in video games? Yes. Bro thinks he's him, but in reality, he has the durability of Sir Gideon of Nier in Elden Ring. I'm surprised he lived that long with that atrocious haircut. Alas, we are too late to stop Lord Faces from summoning the dragon. He did summon one, but it isn't the correct one. Stop overhyping yourself, man. We know you messed up. Before I got the Dark Bishop treatment, the real deal finally showed up, and he flatlined the shit out of the lesser dragon. If that entrance alone ain't badass enough, he scorched the arena with worm fire. Bro thinks he fatalist now. After that, he offered me a choice, either get the throne and banish him in this world, or kill him and still become queen. If you're wondering why he got a random beast run in his claws, it was a major drawback to the plenty of a reason to go around achievement grinding. I'm sorry, Erika. I guess I'm a furry now. Leave my furry wife! <laughs> Leave my furry wife alone man she does not deserve this harassment you even knocked the bad bitch out cold too man you are so screwed now shall we squash this beef as grown as adults this following part contains a hot take please proceed with caution this gregory was a complete letdown <laughs> We went from doing the temple run, avoiding the dragon's bomb runs, and getting a very cool aerial one-on-one -on -one showdown, which stunned Grigori and rendered him incapable of flight, to just riding on his back for several minutes straight, and wait for him to deliver us to the battleground. Where's all that suspense and build up, Capcom? Also, they gave my guy too little health. No way this guy has less HP than a normal drake. And this game allows dragon forging way before the final boss fights. You know there are some devastating consequences, right? Look at all this damage! <laughs> oh my god, Dragon D stunts! What are you doing? I'm gonna do what's called a pro gamer move. Sing, 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 sing! <laughs> Dragon D Jesus Christ! Look at the mask of my boy. Anyways, we defeated the dragon, and we have two options on how to end this story. Either reclaiming the throne and rule over Vermont for hundreds of years, or annoying the hell out of the Seneschal. Of course, I chose the second option. Yup, I clearly struck a nerve in him. Bro was not happy. As punishment for rejecting my destiny, he sends me right back in time. I climbed onto the dragon's back until both of our hearts glowed in unison. Then I withdrew the empowered Gosbane blade for my infantry and stabbed myself to death. This course of action burst Grigori's heart, and we plummeted right into the ocean at alarming speed. We can do nothing as the brine swallowed us. Actually, the brine assimilated way more than just a dragon. As I regained consciousness at the dried up ocean bed, only to realize the entire world has been devoured by the brine while I was asleep. The Seneschal welcomed me into the unmoored world, and he gladly showed me around the local tourist attraction.
actions. For starters, we have to stop the brine from engulfing all the world by destroying three apocalyptic portals. Well, at least Talos still hanging around at the end of the world. I might also need to pay Rothfuss a visit. After I purchased Dragon's Dogma from the Dragonforged, I noticed Dragon Deezness was missing in action. I tried summoning him through the Riftstone, but still I cannot find him. Turns out Lord Faces is keeping Dragon Deezness in his custody and has fallen in a deep coma while I was gone. Mere moments later, he was waking up from his slumber. With our party at full force, I joined Lord Faces in destroying the first portal. Intimidated, the Brian sent forth an adversary into the form of a dragon shaped sculpture. However, it is impossible to approach it from the front. Instead, we have to flank it. To complicate matters at hand, the statue can summon minions to guard it. Also, it has the ability to summon meteors from the sky, cause why not? Eventually, we regrouped right behind the dragon statue. Realizing this, the dragon statue made its final last stand by summoning a horde of enemies. That's why I'm a magic archer in endgame. Ricochet Hunter is overpowered in these occasions. After clearing out the minions, I stepped into the magical barrier and destroyed the dragon statue, liberating Batal from its evil corruption, and shut down the first portal in the process. We then inspected the corpse of Talos. For some reason, my pawn levitated towards it, was sucked into the eye socket, and could somehow command the bronze giants to walk again. Even more impressive is it can scale up to mountains. I don't know what Dragon Deezness is doing, but keep up the good work, I guess. Intimidated by Talos, the Brian sent forward a dragon in hopes of neutralizing it. But Dragon Deezness is on his own. I hope he pulls this off. Damn, he tanking the pink beam like it's nothing. Sub Dragon, how about I dragon this fist into your chest? Upon its death, the dragon self imploded, making Talos lose an arm in the process. The Brian do be preying upon Dragon Deezness down as they sent upon another adversary in the form of a strawberry flavored gummy worm. This new form of candy had Dragon Deezness stumbling. However, the gummy worm made a fatal mistake of positioning its head on the left side. That's where his unbroken arm is, idiot. Yup, he grabbed it. It's over. If Dragon Deezness going down, he's gonna drag some more bodies along with him. Although the giant went out of commission, Dragon Deezness is alive and well. After that, I challenged the second portal in the Sacred Harbor. The Brian reciprocated by sending in another strawberry flavored gummy worm. At first this boss fight had me confused as I was dealing no damage to it. But then I realized I have to hit the grey areas to make it spread onto different parts of the gummy worm. In the end all body parts but the head are covered in grey, which we gladly spammed it with more DPS. Upon its death we have sealed the second portal. One more to go to completely stop the Brian from advancing. Realizing I made quick work of the gummy worm, a strawberry flavored unicorn was called in to dispatch of us. Just like the gummy worm, pink equals invulnerable and gray equals weak. I don't know if I'm lucky or not, this dragon is by far the easiest end game boss. Especially when dragon deezness gets hold of your weak spot. You're done, it's over, just retire. After the third and final portal's been sealed off, I earned myself the hero achievement. However, a fourth portal popped out of nowhere. Unsure of what I had to do next I consulted rough eyes. Turns out he also had no idea of what to do. I'm better off asking someone else. At least the trickster maester offered some genuine advice to bring refugees to the seafloor shrine. Slowly but surely I assisted Sven in evacuating the people of Vermont. I also completed the outer forest into the forge side quest in order to convince the chieftain of Sacred Harbor to evacuate all citizens. Finally we helped the royal forces of Batal to unite the bistran and human Cummins folk to migrate to a seafloor shrine. After evacuating all three major cities, I got the Guardian achievement. Well, I've done everything in the Unmore world and saving everyone in the process. Now, let's see how the story ends. This time, the Seneschal traveled through the portal as a Grigori. The facial features, especially the teeth, reminds me of Nur Gigante so much. To make things even more confusing, Dragon D's nuts turned into a black, okay. gooey toothless. The Dragon's Plague in his body wants to kill me, but Dragon Dragon Deezness will is just too strong to be convinced. Just listen to the sorrow and regret of betrayal in his voice. Master. 
This game made me feel sorry for the pawns. Well done, Capcom. I hitched a free ride and landed on the Seneschal's back. While Dragon Deezness took this distraction as an opportunity to scratch the Seneschal's eye. Dazed by the attack, the Seneschal flip flopped upside down, refilling the heart. And the both of us knew what had to be done. After Dragon Deezness dove down and exposed the heart, I brandished the empowered Gossbane blade to plunge it into the Seneschal's heart. And it's retaliated by exploding spikes through my body. Jeez, this guy still isn't dead. Yeah, let me just stab it in a little bit further. Although the bad news is the both of us are very dead right now. The good news is a new cycle can continue without the dragon, the arisen, and the seneschal's interference. With our deaths, the brine has retreated back into the depths of the oceans. The people that took refuge in seafloor shrine continued their lives as usual. Except this time, there will be no dragon to terrorize the whole country. There will be no arisen to play the hero part every time. And most importantly, there will be no seneschal to control the face of everyone in this world. My story as the Arisen ends here today. I bid you farewell and I'll see you again when the DLC drops. Bye bye.